Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Great Hall. Welcome to the University of Birmingham. Whether you're an undergraduate, postgraduate, um, whether you're here or um, uh, meeting us remotely, we've got an hour to get to know each other, to learn a little bit about each other, learn a little bit about the college, and start your uh, exciting journey uh, through, through your education here with us at the University of Birmingham and in the College of Life and Environmental Sciences. So, I'm Jeremy Pritchard. Uh, I'm the Director of Education for the College, and I'm going to uh, chair this session, but hopefully you won't hear me speak too much. We've got far more interesting people uh, to, to talk to you uh, over the next hour. What we'll do in a moment, uh, we'll, I'll get the people who are going to speak to you to introduce themselves. Then Professor Laura Green, the Head of College, will give you uh, a, an address and a, a welcome to the College. And then we'll have a panel discussion, and it will be available to those of you at home as well, um, using Slido, slido.com. So uh, while we're talking, if you've got a device, if you go to slido.com and put in that code, you'll be able to ask any questions you want. Okay? And as we as academics know, there is no such thing as a stupid question. And if, you, if you've got that question, chances are somebody else in the room really wants to know the answer to that question as well. Um, the panel later on, well, I, will, I will field those questions and ask the questions of the panel uh, and any questions that we don't manage to answer, um, uh, we'll pick up later on in the schools and in the college and the various communication fora that we have. So without further ado, I'll ask, I'll ask the panel uh, to introduce themselves. So first of all, I'll ask Laura uh, just to introduce herself and then we'll go through the panel. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm Laura Green. I'm head of the College of Life and Environmental Sciences. I'll tell you a little bit more about the college in a moment. My background is actually that uh, many, many decades ago I trained as a vet, which might sound rather strange. I then went on and had an academic career. Um, and one of the things that's very exciting for me about this college is the areas that we cover, the disciplines that we cover. And although we don't train vets at, Bristol, at Birmingham University, we, um, we cover a lot of the disciplines that really map with my areas of interest and, and research. So really nice to see you all here today. Thank you, um, Laura. So, Itamati. Hi, everyone. I'm Itamati. I am a final year geography and urban planning student, and I'm also the school rep for geography. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Hi, I'm Owen Wilson. Uh, I'm the School of Biosciences rep. I'm a second year biochemist. Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm a final year integrated master's in psychology and psychological research with a year in computer science. I'm also the president of the Ethnically Empowered Student Network, so which is for all ethnic minorities within the LES. So come along if you're interested. Hello, um, oh, Mike. <laughs> Hi, I'm Raj. Uh, I'm a part-time PhD student. I've just started my fourth year. Um, my research is looking at how we can better utilise mobile technologies to enhance the learning experiences and opportunities of young people with autism uh, and social, emotional, and mental health difficulties. Um, I'm also a what's called a Westmere scholar here. So, uh, in other words, it's more or less a, a representative for the postgraduate community, where we host a whole range of uh, events tailored for postgraduates, such as uh, postgraduate mixes, uh, to more tailored events, such as we're looking at getting some guest speakers in uh, this year as well. So if there are any postgraduates in the crowd um, or at home, uh, please do send some questions across. Okay, sorry if that's me making that banging noise. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'll just say that, uh, as I said at the beginning, I'm Jerry Pritchard. I'm the Director of Education for the College. I'm actually in the School of Biosciences. Uh, and um, I'm a plant biologist, and I hope I will convert some of you to the wonders of plant science during your studies. Uh, uh, so without further ado, I will pass over to Laura uh, to introduce the college. Laura. Thanks very much indeed, Jerry. Jerry's very, very proud of his gardener's delight tomatoes that he's been growing this year. So not only a plant scientist at work, but a, a gardener at home. So it's a great pleasure to welcome you all here this morning. Uh, you've arrived, you're at the University of Birmingham. It's been a funny old 18 months to two years, but it's so great to see people face to face again. We really hope that you will have a fantastic time whilst you're here, um, and we hope that you're all really proud to have got here. So I want to tell you a little bit about the college, because 
Um, we are a college of four schools. So a few things. There's a little pink badge that you might um, be able to find. Do get one. It says very strangely College of Les, but Les is Life and Environmental Sciences. Um, and that's quite important because we do a few things at college level that uh, are there for your support. So I'll talk about those a bit more in a moment. But the other thing is we have a bag, just to remind you that you're in a college, um, with our four schools on. So who's from Biosciences here? Give me a wave and a whoop. Oh, you're very quiet. OK. Can we get any more noise from Geography, Earth and Environmental Sciences? Oh, a little whoop. Welcome. Psychology? Ah, oh, yeah, OK. Sport, exercise, and rehabilitation sciences. A stomp. Nice to see you all. So, and some of you are going to be undergraduates. Give me a wave. Have we got any postgraduates here? Brilliant. Welcome to all of you as well. So, these four schools are in our college. And for you, the important thing is that you have brilliant academics in each of your schools. Sorry, I should wave to the camera guys as well. Hi, camera guys. Um, and the, the grouping that we have within the college is how we are offering you support. So we have a building called the Old Gym, which is just over there. Um, and it has that LES sign on it. That's partly why I wanted to tell you about the, the LES abbreviation. That's where you can go if you've got any queries or questions. That's where um, a lot of the support you will have around um, education from the teams, that are the teams other than your academics. So the wellbeing team is there, some of the educational support is there. Really important um, group to go to to find out if you're stuck on anything, they can help. Um, and through this year, we've got some themed events that are going to be going on there. So also do, do pop in just to find out what's going on. We're also going to have a, a newsletter that will come out to you every fortnight. Um, fortnightly you'll get one from the college, fortnightly you'll get one from the whole university. These go to your email addresses, your Birmingham email address. Um, I realise emails are, are very old fashioned for many of you, but it is the main way that we will communicate with you. So please do check your emails every day um, and, and, and read and follow our updates as we put them through. So it's great to see you all here. One of the things as a college that we have been doing is thinking about what are we good at, what do we do. Um, we do really important stuff. So you can broadly frame what we do around well-being and sustainability, whether that's biodiversity, sustainability of physical and mental health, sustainability of our environment, well-being across those spaces as well. So you are going to be part of our college and as you go through your time here and as you graduate, you are going to be the people that are going to help us find solutions so that we can adapt ourselves to this very, very fast changing world. Uh, and we're also quite special because we do right from the physical sciences through to social sciences. So in our geography department, we have people studying people. And, and a really big, important part of sustainability is, is around people. So when we have political unrest, when we have droughts, people migrate. They don't want to do that. They do that because where they are is, is a place they can no longer live. And we have researchers studying it, um, in those areas. And as I say, right the way through from those studying human brain to cells, molecules, e even plants. Um, so really strong welcome to you. Find out what you um, really enjoy and, and work at it. And that's the best recipe for your career is to find what you're enthused about and make that your job for life. On the note of jobs, um, we have quite a lot of opportunities to help you work out what you want to do. Um, and we like to start right from the very beginning. So you will get some tutorials and some prep on, on how to think about that. If you already know, just keep finding out more um, and develop yourself to, to, to where you want to move to in the end. The other thing, just to highlight for those of you undergraduates, 90% of you will get a first or a 2-1. There's quite a lot of anxiety when you come to university, that feeling that it's very different from school, and it is. We don't tend to repeat stuff so much. We don't tend to check that we know that you know things. Don't get too nervous about that. It's just a different style of working. Um, and, and actually, what we sort of aim is that when you go into the year, it's quite difficult. But by the time you finish the year, you know what you're doing. And, and that's what we do each year. So we step it up a little bit, and we take you with us through that journey. So, 
don't worry, don't panic if it all feels a bit strange to start with. Um, you will get there, you will all do very well. And I'm saying that because the other thing is just take advantage of all the other things there are at university. This is the only time there will be so much that you can do at so little cost to yourself. Once you end up becoming employed and paying tax, things get very expensive. So please take advantage of music societies, sports societies, language societies, cooking clubs, whatever it is you'd like to do, take advantage of it whilst you're here um, and really get to enjoy the whole university experience as well, of course, as well, hit, hitting um, Birmingham at various times of day and night. So, I think um, that's all I want to say, but just again, a really big welcome to each of you to the college, um, and I know you'll get welcome to your schools through this week. Thanks very much. Laura. So now we move into the Q&A, an opportunity for you to ask our panel anything you want. Now I've got some questions coming in on the Slido. Um, if you want to, if you haven't had a chance yet, if you go to slido.com and put that code in, you'll be able to, to ask the questions uh, of the panel, and I will pick them up on the iPad and, and pass them over. So um, I, I realize that you were listening to the talks, but so far we've only got questions coming in for postgraduates. So obviously the undergraduates are perfectly happy and understand everything about what's happening. Um, so without further ado, I'll wait for those undergraduate questions to come in. As I said, don't worry, there's no such thing as a silly question. I asked a silly question at the VC yesterday, uh, which when he was doing the same thing to, to the scholars, and I asked him, why hasn't old Joe uh, got any hands yet? Okay, I'll just leave that hanging there. Okay. So, without further ado, the first question is um, is, a, is about postgraduate study. So we're over to, to Raj. As a postgraduate student, what are the best ways to get involved and to meet other students? Switching from UG to postgraduate is is actually very different. So, over to you. Yeah. So um, I would say. Um, as a Westmere Scholar, we are hosting a lot of socially orientated events. So, for example, the Sunday just gone, we had hosted a postgraduate mixer. Um, so, what I would say to you is access the student intranet, and we're going to have a calendar of events uh, where you can meet a whole host of postgraduate um, students such as yourselves. Being a postgraduate can be a very lonely and isolating um, time, uh, perhaps given the nature of your research and, and what have you. Um, so I'd say that would be the first thing to do. The second, which we brushed upon earlier, is getting involved in societies as well. You'd be surprised just how many postgraduates do get involved with societies as well. Um, so with myself, I'm part of the, I play competitive badminton, um, and there are some postgraduates that I've met there. So to summarise, I'd say um, access the Westmere Scholar uh, intranet on, uh, via University of Birmingham uh, and uh, the uh, social slash uh, sporting events as well. I hope that's answered your question. I've not waffled on too long. As I say, we'll pick these questions up as we go through and we'll feed them back after this event as well. So we've got some undergraduate ones coming in now, so you've all been undergraduates, as, as have we. Um, and um, the question is, what's the difference between, a, it's not a joke, what's the difference between a seminar, a lecture, and a tutorial? Who'd like to kick that one up? I know what I think. But... Um, <clears throat> so a lecture usually takes place in a big lecture theater it, it has got a lot of people, mostly the, your entire course group, so that can range from about 40 people to 200 people, depending on what course you're doing. A seminar is a small group teaching, so you will have smaller groups, around 10, 20 people. Um, so it's a place where you can uh, be more interactive, you can discuss about things. Seminars also usually come with some kind of pre preparation, so you might be given something to read beforehand that you can let later go and discuss. Tutorials are even smaller group teaching, so you might have your personal tutor or any other tutor, and it's also the place where you can um, you know, talk about other things uh, about your life, if you have any other kind of worries about mental health, etc. that's also the place you can address those. Thank you, that's really comprehensive. Anybody else got anything to add from their own experience? 
Um, so being a second year, I didn't get to properly experience um, the major differences between um, lectures and seminars, but there is a massive difference in focus. Um, as it's mostly said, there's a big focus on learning new content in lectures, whereas seminars is sort of a collaboration to consolidate, and then tutorials are just sort of discussion work. Okay, anything to add? I think they summed it up pretty well. So yeah, make use of the time that you have interacting because I think like breaking down the content and having those discussions where you can like pick apart everything and be like critically, um, critically analyze things is really important for your course. So really make sure you use of that time. Great, okay, so hopefully that's clear. Um, top question at the moment, how do labs work at university? I assume this is an undergraduate um, question. Um, labs you've got the different sorts of labs right from the biochemistry right up to field work for example or even uh, and that can include the social sciences so over to you owen i think is probably the best yeah uh, so the bio labs are normally hosted in the biosciences building uh, or in the ctl depending on your degree uh, if you're biochemist you will do a lot of chemistry work in the wet labs uh, it's normally extended sessions uh, one to two hours uh, depending on your year group and it's just comprehensive work developing skills in undergraduate and then in postgraduate, I'm sure uh, it would be best to pass it on. Uh, you also have things like e-labs, which are learning computer skills and uh, protein modeling, etc. So in psychology, we do have um, lab lectures. They're usually for research methods. So we're focusing on really breaking down the data that we're um, receiving and figuring out whether things are significant or not. If you've done psychology A level, you'll know as well. Um, so most of our lab lectures are going to be in computer labs um, rather than like field works per se. Um, then when you get on to doing like third year and beyond that, you'll be working more so in different techniques. So the university's really lucky to have a lot of good labs where you can do like MRI and EEG things when you get into your third year and you're working on a project so we do have quite a lot of things in psychology too. Um, if you're in geography there's a lot of different things that we mean by labs so in the first year you will be doing wet labs, dry labs and computer labs for the physical geography modules. Um, if you're doing human geography specialization later on, you will be doing a lot of field work or computer labs, depending obviously on the kind of research methods you choose. So you will have research methods modules in every year, and then you will do field work associated with that. If you're doing a planning degree like me, our lab, as we like to call it, is the city of Birmingham. So you will go out into the city and explore the different parts of the city and then work on that. So it's a big, wide world. That's our lab. Excellent, yeah. In fact, if you followed the college on Facebook, you have seen that the paleobiology students have just come back from the Isle of Wight where they were digging up dinosaurs. So, uh, and you, they put the, the fossils they found in the Lapworth Museum, which is just around the corner. So you can go and see, see what they found. Um, what will exams look like online or in person? Well, I, I think perhaps I might answer that one as the director of education. Um, what we did during the, during the lockdown, is, as you probably experienced in your own studies, uh, either at university or in your schools and colleges, is, is um, uh, open book and online exams. So by and large, we don't now have exams where you would sit in a room like this for three hours and have to remember things. So you might get um, a 24-hour period where a question was released to you and you had time to research it and look at your notes and submit the answer um, uh, b um, before the deadline. Now, um, any, any exams that you get, any assessments that you get, obviously, as Laura intimated earlier on, you get, people get anxious about, about the assessments. You won't be asked to do any assessments that you haven't been trained or prepared for or had some practice at. And all those things will be embedded in your modules, but also provided outside the specific module classroom um, uh, during, during the term time. So uh, all that will, will be provided. And so, so, so it's pretty well all open book online. So, so you, you'll get a lot more information as you move through your modules about, about the assessments. I don't know if anybody here has, has had experience of them in, in, in the first year, um, last year. Um, so we did the online exams uh, and they do give you uh, the whole day. It's a 25 hour uh, period that you could submit your uh, results. 
um, for any of the questions you were given, depending on how many credits um, the module has, is how many questions you got. And you also had a multiple choice question um, quiz, uh, which is timed, um, but they do give you ample time to be able to properly synthesize the answer to the question. Any other experiences of that? Um, so my experience is a little bit different because I was doing third year. Um, so it was 48 hours for exam essay questions, which was nice. They do say that you don't have to use the whole time, so you're given a nice window, but obviously you don't have to work for the whole time. Um, I think in psychology for first and second years there were MCQ and short answer questions, which did have smaller time windows or timed questions, as Owen said. So it's different. I will say from experience that I appreciate both styles of exams so don't worry if you're like used to one type of exams doing lots of different types of exams it just tests a range of your skills and it you're able to show your full potential that way so don't worry too much about it yeah I, I think I should mention that week 12 of the semester is assessment support week so if you have exams in the first semester exam period then that week you will be given a lot of additional training that prepares you to take any kind of online exams. Um, so do attend those sessions. There's also Academic Skills Center that helped with a lot of online exams as well. So those are two really good resources if you want to check them out. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point about that support at the university level as well as in the module, uh, the module that you're doing. Um, it's a much better way of assessing. You think of the jobs you're going to do. Nobody's going to sit you in a room without a phone, without Google, without a textbook, and say, what do you remember? That's not an important skill. That's not authentic, as we would say. So hopefully you'll find it a, a much better way of developing your skills and uh, for the future employment and so on that, that you'll go into. And you'll hear a lot more about that, as I say, in the modules. So a really important question, um, uh, again, about that preparation for exams. A lot of you are asking, well, what should you do if you think you're falling behind your workload? So I don't know. We talked a little bit about tutorials. There was a question about tutorials. I don't know whether you guys want to pick that up. Who's, who's got a view on that? Um, so it's always good to communicate any of your struggles with your tutor. Um, you'll each have a personal academic tutor. Um, in certain st circumstances where you do feel you're falling behind, you feel like you're not going to be able to meet a deadline for any reason, you can ask for extensions uh, as long as you plead your case. Uh, you can also, again, use uh, well-being. And uh, if you are a student who's allowed wraps, definitely utilize them to the best of your ability. It does take a lot of the stress off of uh, trying to give yourself the unnecessary amount of work and trying to keep up as well as learning the new content. So definitely use all the resources to your ability. I would definitely say talking to someone is the first step because it, if you don't talk to anyone, they're not going to know that you need the extra support and the support that the university does provide, as has been said, is really amazing if you need it. So it is there for you, but you just have to ask for it first. Yeah, I would say don't be scared of your lecturers. Um, they might feel intimidating, but they're not. Just tell them what's going wrong and they will help you out. That, that's a really good point. One of the things that, that we, we try to do is, is it, you don't have to call us professor or doctor. All my students call me Jerry, right? Nobody else in my entire family calls me Jerry apart from my students. So y you should talk to us as, as equals because you're starting on that research journey now. And by the time you finish it, you're going to know as much about your subject as anybody by the time you've finished your research project. So this is, this is a community of equals, right? You're part of it. It's not, it's not hierarchical. So w we are your friends and we are excited to interact about our research, about our teaching. That's what we're for. Um, and, and that's what we're excited about with you lot coming back. Well, we've missed you. I don't know if Laura wants to pick that up. I didn't realize that um, everyone in your family had to call you professor. I think that's just rather <laughs> uh, The other thing is that, that you, you yourselves, you know, um, I think the first thing if you're worried about your workload is just talk to each other uh, and talk to maybe somebody in the year above you um, and, and find out from them their experience of, of what it is you actually really need to do and, and, and where you feel that you are. So we have societies within the schools so you can become a member of one of, one of the societies. Um, but you'll make friends and meet people. Um, so just get a sense check from, from amongst yourselves as well. Um. Yeah, that, that leads actually quite nicely into a, a question that's a little bit further down the list, which I'll, I'll throw over to the panel, which is about the societies. What, what societies are there that people could get involved in? And 
just the ethically empowered student. <laughs> so I'll start that one. Um, so the ethically empowered student network is something that they started last year, but obviously weren't able to do a lot because of COVID restrictions. So as I said before, it's for ethnic minorities within the LES. Um, what we plan to do this year is just to create a nice, chill community where we can have discussions about certain things. Um, so whether that be talking about your day or analysing like different media content that might be empowering or problematic, um, just having those discussions opening everything up for us. Um, another thing that we're planning to do is we have a Black History Month event talk called Let's Talk About Why We Should Talk About Race, where we want to um, kind of showcase the positive representations within like scholars from the LES because we feel that's not that done a lot and there's a lot of people that I learned about that I wouldn't have learned about if I hadn't done it myself so just sharing that knowledge um, so if you're interested definitely come along and um, we have an Instagram it's EESN underscore UOB so follow us on that and that's where we can do a lot of updating you can also join our discord link from there with the link tree um, so it'd be nice to get to know some of you and be able to talk to you so, some of you in person come along to some of our events we do want to have casual things like bowling, going out for meals, showcasing off different um, food from different cultures. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing I'll just plug, because I'm also a psychology student, the Psychology Society is run by amazing people every year. And that's like where you can find if you're having like problems within psychology or you want support within psychology, a lot of people there can help you. I know psychology does... Um, like one-to-one -one sessions where they'll have like second years come and coach first years for undergrad which it creates a really nice community you get to know people you get to have that ability to talk to someone who's done what you've done the year before so that's another thing that I know they do quite a lot of events so going out socials kind of thing um, you can find psychology textbooks for your course but different modules on there as well so that's something else that you could get involved in if you're in psychology I think what um what's quite good in this day and age as well is well, we live in this digital age and what I think COVID's taught us is, is accessibility and improving accessibility um, and I think especially with societies and sports societies they're so accessible um, in terms of how you can find out more information about them so badminton for instance I didn't realize that this but um, they've made a TikTok for badminton I'm not too sure about what TikTok is I know you, you, you do weird dances on it but um, a lot of societies are branching out on their social platforms as well. Um, from a postgraduate perspective um, as well, just to go back to the Westmere role, we have the Westmere postgraduate hub as well where we'll host uh, like cinema nights. I think there's a wine and cheese night um, as well. Um, I think there's al there'll be alcohol-free wine as well, um, which is quite nice. And just to slightly backtrack about if you're concerned, um, if you're falling behind, from a postgraduate perspective again it can be very easy to fall into the trap of that you, you feel as though you're falling behind um, my key piece of advice is two two things it would be to communicate this with your supervisors right from the get-go and the second is expectation setting right from your very first meeting so what my, I did with my two supervisors was I created a, a quick template of what was discussed in the meeting and feed forward comments and what needs to be worked on for the next meeting as well. Um, it can be quite hard to structure your time when you first start postgraduate studies, but if you set your expectations high, you'll set yourself up for success. Okay. If you do geography, we have three student societies. So we have the Kinvig, which is kind of the big geography society. Um, they do a lot of events throughout the year, including the Kinvig Bowl every year, which is a very nice formal event. They also have their own sports teams, so they do hockey, rugby, netball, um, if you're interested in. There's also the planning society for the planning students. Um, they do a lot of academic events as well. And there's also LAPSOC for earth sciences. Uh, I feel like I should also plug the uh, BioSoc committee. Uh, we run socials and stuff like that all the time. Uh, they collaborate quite closely with the school as well. Uh, they come to school education committees and stuff like that, uh, which allows for better like, liaise with the school and the society. So it helps build really good rapport between students and their lecturers. Uh, I also feel like I should plug uh, language societies. It's really important that we uh, raise awareness of different languages and linguistics. Uh, personally, I do sign language, uh, so it's a really good opportunity if you would like to learn some sign language. Um, I also recommend just find like-minded people. There's practically a society for every single interest out there. Um, go wild, there's a society fair on today and tomorrow at the Guild, definitely give it 
a look. It's got a plethora of societies to look through, as well as uh, sports uh, clubs. So, yeah, go wild. As the VC said yesterday when he was asked a similar question, don't get to your final year and go, oh, I wish I'd done that. Do it now. Okay, okay just, just a slightly different question, uh, and it's, it's really fortuitous that Laura's here because Laura is the sustainability lead for the, for the university. A question about the sustainability around the university, use of fossil fuels and renewables and so on. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, so we have just launched our strategic plan, which is for the next five to ten years across the university, and it has six main pillars. One is education, um, one's research, there are a few others, but one is sustainability. And we, we are um, really launching a quite ambitious program. So we have a plan to become carbon neutral for the energy we use, so that's scopes one and two, those of you who are more into the jargon, um, by 2035 and fully carbon neutral by 2045. It's actually a huge undertaking to do that, both as a, um, from a people point of view and a structure point of view, because we have beautiful buildings like this, but they are then really quite difficult to work out how you're going to manage them sustainably. Um, key things for this year, you will see we've got Food Fellows, which is a, a new campus food supplier where we're really looking to um, eat local, eat sensibly, think about the foods that we eat, think about the waste that's produced from those foods, with the target of, of reducing our carbon footprint in that space. And we have a lot of focus on transport. So we have a new station going in, which you will see being built at the moment. That will be ready in 2022 for the Commonwealth Games. Games. But it's also a really useful thing for us, because it means that we can travel much more efficiently using the train. You might have seen scooters around, depending on where you're based, but um, many people are now using these electric scooters to, to, come, to, to come in to work if they live fairly locally. Lots of good ways of biking in locally. Um, and we are also looking at probably less exciting, but we're looking at carbon. So we're formulating the carbon and electricity. All of our electricity is green electricity. We're looking at how we can move from, from gas to, to green electricity. So solar paneling, um, wind turbines are all things that, that we will be investing in, changing how we heat. Um, we also have a beautiful campus with a lot of biodiversity, and I'm really keen that we make sure that we protect and develop that biodiversity. And there are many societies that you can get involved with across those areas. There, there are, um, one area that comes up a lot, and obviously the question included this, is around fossil fuel investment. So the university um, has um, some money which it invests, which uh, we, we have that money and it's invested, but it also means it's money we can access if we need to quite quickly. Um, that might be too much detail. So, um, and we have to invest it responsibly, and we are a charity, so we follow the, the charity guidelines on how we do that. Uh, and typically, we use a portfolio, so there are other people actually investing the funding. So we take great care when we look at who is, is funding for us, um, and we have a whole tranche of areas that we will not invest in. So we are very keen to make sure we do not invest in modern slavery, um, we don't invest in, in gaming, for example, so other areas that we don't invest in. And you will know that some of the biggest companies in the world are um, at least as part or a majority of their work doing fossil fuel activity. Um, and we've been decreasing the investment where they are uh, in the portfolio. So we were, a few years ago, I think we were around 5%. We're now well below 1% in terms of uh, any of our investment going into companies that, that are using fossil fuels. It's actually very, very difficult to get to zero because of the way we invest with, with a portfolio of managers. Um, and those fossil fuel companies are also themselves investing in developing green energy. So as a university at the moment, we're not saying we've gone to zero, we're going to very low. Um, you will also know, maybe not in this college, but other colleges, we do work with those companies for other areas. So for example, we receive scholarships, and it, it may well be a scholarship from a fossil fuel company, 
for investing in research into green renewables. So it, it's actually quite complicated. Um, but I think what we're doing is what we believe is, is morally and ethically the right approach. Thanks, Laura. Comprehensive answer. And you'll be studying a lot of these things in your different subject areas as well. So you'll be contributing to some of this moving forward anyway. Maybe this is the time we should mention um, that for next year we are launching um, a degree program around sustainability. Um, that's running across um, in particular two of our schools, but looking very much around the, the environment and climate aspects of, of sustainability. Um, and that, that will bring in geology uh, and, and some of these complex issues around fossil fuels. Yeah, so you, you'll see that maybe options that you can take that are, are relevant to that moving forward across the college. Um, I did like the reference to uh, recycling food stuff because as Laura says, I am a gardener and I am quite obsessed with compost. So um, recycling compost is one of my favorite things. Um, I have three compost bins if you want to know uh, and a very specific cycle. Um, okay, so a couple of questions that I think I'll just pick up quickly which are, which are getting a lot of votes at the moment. Will it matter if we didn't cover everything at A-level? Uh, and the answer to that is, is simply no because we're aware and in touch with the schools. We know what's happened in schools. We know what's happened in our areas. We constructed our, during the, during the lockdown, we constructed an online um, uh, bimodal uh, way of teaching, very similar to the way that you will have been doing in schools and colleges. And so all that material's there and, and forms the basis um, of the knowledge base of what you'll be studying and then dealing within the face-to-face -face sessions that you'll have, the tutorials, the practicals, the lectures and seminars and so on. We also, in any module, as Laura said, we're starting to do a lot more cross-college teaching, so we can't expect everybody in a class to have the same um, set of A-levels uh, uh, as everybody else. So we don't assume that everybody has the same set of knowledge uh, coming in uh, from the beginning anyway, even in a normal environment. So, so the answer is no, um, it, it won't be a problem. If you feel there is an area where you're not, um, you're not up to speed and you feel that you should be, it's highly likely other people won't be either, you should bring that up with your tutor, as, uh, uh, as was said there, or, or, or one of the, the questionnaires or discussions or face-to-face -face sessions with the tutor. It's a dialogue, it's not didactic, it's not us telling you stuff, it's a, it, it's a conversation. Uh, so, so please be reassured by that, but take the time to tell us if you feel something isn't, uh, isn't working. It's not all going to be easy, some of it's going to be hard. If it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be worth doing. Uh, but you're all here because you've been selected as somebody who could achieve that. So, so, so uh, keep the dialogue going. Okay, an important question. What are the best ways to make friends uh, on your course? We've already dealt a little bit with societies, which I think partly answers that. I don't know if uh, who wants to keep that one off. Crikey. Uh, so I was first year during uh, Corona, so it was pretty difficult to go out to socials. Um, but I would definitely say use any device you can to go out and make friends. Uh, you'll find that you'll bump into people at the pub and you'll click with them and you'll become mates. Uh, use your societies definitely also use your student groups your tutor groups um, you can make study groups and they make good drinking buddies uh, just really try and put yourself out there everyone's in the exact same boat um, everyone is sort of on their own in the big ocean so buddy up I guess um, a nice thing that Biosoc did last year was they'd made a family scheme uh, so you can have siblings in Biosoc and I'm sure that you can have sort of similar things in the other societies. Uh, but yeah, really just put yourself out there. Everyone's in the same boat. Don't be scared. Everyone's lovely. Yeah, I, I met, met all of my best friends on my course just by turning up to lectures five minutes early and just speaking to the other person who was also five minutes early. Just speak to people who you're sitting with during lectures and seminars, and there's a high chance you'll just keep talking and become friends down the line. Yeah, definitely, I would say <laughs> going to lectures and seminars and having those discussions with people academically can always like blossom into something else beyond just what you're going for. Um, so definitely show up for things um, and make use of the extra time that you have. I think um, I found my first year friends just 
sitting next to them, as she said, showing up a little bit earlier to lectures. You have your tutor group, which is a smaller group of people. Um, you can really connect with them because you can talk about anything with them in those tutorial sessions because they're not as like formal as a lecture might be. Um, so definitely make use of your societies and those groups of people that you notice on a regular basis. Yeah, so you've got your tutor group, you've got the people you live with, the, commu the commuting students, uh, you know, the, there are societies and events organised for them. There's the lectures, there's the practicals, the workshops, there's huge, there's the societies, there's all sorts of ways uh, to meet people and make friends. Uh, and don't worry if you feel you're the only one who's not, because probably everybody's feeling much the same. So uh, I, mem I remember I did anyway. Um, so great opportunities to take. Don't, don't worry if you feel it's happening too slowly. We, we also, uh, what we're also doing in, in a lot of the schools is having vertical tutorials. So you'll actually, uh, it's not sort of balancing act. It means that you'll meet uh, the second and third and fourth year tutees with your tutor. So you'll be able to talk to them about how things have gone and almost a bit like this panel discussion, but, but online. Um, so that, that's a really good opportunity as well to, to, to make more connections. Uh, and and just, just a quick one, a question that's come up relevant to that while we're talking about tutorials. Do you stay with your tutor for the whole three to four years? The answer is yes. Um, and that provides you with some continuity as well. So, so you stay with the same group and you stay with the same tutor. So that allows you to really form some, some good bonds. So a question that's been sitting here, um, which is quite a difficult one, um, uh, and I've just sort of neglected asking it. How do you prepare for lectures? which is an interesting question, but one that in the current climate maybe has changed a bit. I don't know if you've got views on what a lecture is these days and how you prepared for it. Um, most lecturers will kind of upload the PDF or the PowerPoint slides beforehand. So you can have a look at those, get a printout or, or, or on, a, on a tab, make notes if you want to. But lectures are basically the first place where you go to learn things. It's OK if you don't prepare for them. Uh, you just prepare for the seminars, and usually the teachers will tell you what to do to prepare for a seminar. So yeah. Uh, if there are recommended readings in your lecture that, the, uh, that your lecturer mentions, it's a good idea to kind of have a look at those as well. As well. Yeah, I mean, on, on recommended reading, on your Canvas course, which is the, the way that we deliver a lot of the teaching, you'll see something called resource lists, which is your, effectively your reading list. And the, what the academics will have done is they will have badged the reading into essential, recommended, and background, so you can triage your reading. And if something's essential for a lecture, you probably should have read it before you go to the lecture. Otherwise, you're going to have to rely on your friends to cover for you. Any, any questions or comments about that? Uh, so I'm very used to the bimodal system, uh, which you uh, mentioned. Um, so Canvas has a lot of the resources uh, done in a week-by-week -week fashion. Uh, so check your timetable, make sure you're fully aware of all the lectures you've got that day. Uh, and then it will tell you the preparation tasks that you've got for that specific seminar or lecture. Um, they are quite explicit about what you need to do. Um, so don't fret if you feel like you've not um, prepared enough. It will tell you explicitly what you've needed to do before going to that lecture and they do give you ample time to do it as well so don't feel overwhelmed it's it will be fine yeah i think one thing else i would say is um first year is kind of the place where you learn how you learn um so make use of the fact that there's kind of a little bit less academic pressure in terms of what counts and what doesn't um just figure out how best you learn in terms of do you want to print out lecture slides beforehand and annotate on those? Do you want to make your own set of notes? Do you want to make sure you go through all these readings beforehand and then extra reading just so you really understand the topic? Or do you want to leave that until you have the foundation knowledge from the lecture and do that after? So you have to kind of figure out how you work best and what works well for you so you can organize your time like that because everything works differently for everyone. So don't just do what other people are doing because it might not be the best way that works for you. So definitely learn how you learn. Any other comments? No? Um, I'm a PhD student, so I don't have lectures. Uh, <laughs> but from my uh, from my experience um, and from just building on what I said earlier, I think it's just expectation setting. Don't forget, you, you're all coming into a new, most likely a new way of uh, way of learning. So I would use this first term especially to, to identify how you best learn. Um, 
and to discuss any any concerns or questions with your uh, with your um, your tutor lead um, as well. But I completely agree with what everyone on on, on this panel has said. Uh, but fundamentally, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, you're all babies. You're all first years. Um, just use this as a, as a learning curve and set your expectations high because it'll it'll only benefit you when it comes to you know the grind of second and third term and the rest of your undergraduate journey. That's really good advice, and I really like the phrase "learn learn how to learn," because the first year exams in January and in in, in May they don't count towards the, your final degree classification. It's really just a check so that we know that you're at a certain level and you're prepared for the, for the honors years in the second and the third year. So type, that's a really good phrase. Take the time to, to learn how to learn and use the tools that we've talked a little bit about um, uh, uh, as you move forward, talking to each other, talking to your tutors to make sure that, that you have the skills uh, as you move forward. Okay, um, an, another um, uh, question about um, worry, a little bit of worry, a little bit of worry that uh, I'm sitting here now and I don't know what career I want to do. Is, is that a problem, do you think? Absolutely not, no. Um, that's what you're here for. You're here to learn what you like. Um, it's on this uni journey that you will find what courses and specific backgrounds and fields you want to develop and grow into. Um, and the university will also cater to that. Um, you'll have selection of modules, uh, you can do as much extra reading into specific topics as you like. Uh, also we offer the careers network, um, they're absolutely fantastic if you have any queries about careers and uh, apprenticeship opportunities definitely do speak to them. I th I'd say that it's nice that you're asking this question now but not everyone leaves uni after their undergrad and knows what they want to do. Um, there's very much so an opportunity to explore a lot of things whilst you're at uni. There's also an opportunity to explore things after you leave uni. So don't just kind of be like, I want, I need to know what I want to do now. Um, don't have that kind of mindset. Yes, it's nice kind of figuring out um, exactly what you want to do. But as Owen said, just explore what you like, explore what you don't like, um, kind of figure that out for yourself and get to that place where you're like, these are kind of the areas that I'd be more interested into and explore all of those areas rather than just trying to like find one avenue to stick on because that doesn't always work for people. And I know in geography they do a lot of kind of skill development and professional placement modules in the third year. So if you're not sure, you can always go to those and they take care of your kind of employable skills and careers network, again, as Owen mentioned, is, is a great place. Uh, they can help you out with CVs, interviews, all of that stuff. They're just a great bunch of people to talk to. Um, yeah. And in increasingly those sort of skills, careers network and so on, are, are embedded in your tutorials from the very first year. So it's not like you just go to them, I mean, well, it's important to get your CV and your interview skills up, but this idea of exploring the skills that you have and how that fits with a certain career is, is really important. And across the college, we have a range of, of, of placement modules and also opportunities to do placements um, uh, as part of your course for a year. Um, or, or, or as just a single module and also the careers network have a whole resource about internships um, and, and some of those placements it, it could be study abroad and, and a lot of those choices in fact all of those choices even though you might not have come in to do those are not set in stone yet and over this year as Owen says you start to explore what you like you talk to your tutor and you think about your second year options and how those choices will fall out and how your career um, uh, your career aspirations develop I mean, as Laura said, there's plenty of problems in the world to solve and, and hopefully you'll be the people to solve them because we messed it up, so you've got to fix it. Um, I, I Just go back to the point I said at the beginning as well. So I think it's, it's finding out what you're naturally good at. So if you, you think about what you're going to study, um, the, the, the programmes you've chosen don't necessarily have a career-defined end point. Um, and that's absolutely fine because most careers are not because you've done this degree you go on to do that career um, and indeed what what um, the research around careers is showing is that you you could choose to do any career that you wish it would be which part of it do you do so if you're a really sociable person you're likely to want to go on and, and work with lots of other people but you could be doing that in a hospital or in investment banking so it's not that, that the career itself is, is going to define you. It's going to be what sort of work do you want to do? Do you want to be with people? Do you want to be by yourself? Are you particularly good with 
thinking about things in strategy and numbers are actually better at selling things. So, um, and, and actually I'd say most of you, if you are here today and you think you know what you want to do, particularly those of you at undergraduate stage, uh, it's probably not what you're going to end up doing. So I have a, a really nice story from one of my tutees who um, all the way through his undergraduate program thought he wanted to go on to do postgraduate medicine. And it got to his third year um, and he was worrying, was he going to get in or was he going to get a 2-1? And um, every year he used to come back from his summer holidays and he had spent his holidays selling bags on a market stall and he'd come back with all these stories of how he'd sold his bags to various people and um, what, you know, their lives and how he'd really related to them. And I, and I said, you know, you know, your natural gift is actually selling things and talking to people. You know, it's all very fine if you really want to be a doctor, but have you thought about if that's really what you want to do? Um, and within six months of graduating, he'd got uh, an entrepreneurial fund from the university and set up his own company um, selling fruit juices. And actually, that was far better for his personality. So you know, I, I would say trust your instincts, do what you want to do, go with what you want to do. Um, I guess you could say, do we know what we want to do with our lives, even at our great age? You know, it, it wasn't planned, but these things evolve. And, and it's, it's always just looking for what it is you want to do in the next opportunity. And, and I do hope that what we're offering you through your tutorial program, through the placements, through the year abroad and so on, will give you those experiences for you to find out for yourself what it is that, that lights your boat. I'm going to take over for a moment because I want to introduce Jen and Kerry, come out from behind the pillars. So Jen and Kerry are, are two really, really important people in the college. Um, they are both responsible for the whole of your student experience. So Kerry has the joy of running the whole of the old gym. How many people have you got working with you in there, Kerry? About 50. So a really big team who are there to help you and make sure that um, you have a really good support network through um, all the different aspects of, of your student life. And then Jen, who is really looking at the whole of the experience of our students in the college, um, working in terms from, from what is it that we're teaching to how we're teaching to the sort of support that, that we're giving a, across your whole lifespan um, at the university. So two really important people, always smiling. Um, and so do say hello to them if you ever see them running around being very busy. But thank you both. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you must go to the old gym if you haven't already been on a tour. Get your bag. Uh, and have a, have a look and, and say hello and get a badge. Yes, get a badge. Um, okay, I think, I think we're probably uh, coming uh, close to the end now. So uh, probably um, uh, worth just drawing it to a close. Um, when you go for lectures, of course, lectures, uh, despite the fact in Zoom, we went from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, lectures on campus run for 50 minutes. So we're supposed to finish at 10 to the hour so you can get to the next event, face-to-face uh, -face event on campus. So technically, I'm four minutes over. Um, but uh, uh, there's a question here which I, I think is, is one for us to think about, and I've got a slight answer to it, is will there be any more LES events this year? Well, I'm, I'm reassured that people feel that college events are, are of value, and I hope you continue to, to think that and feed back the sort of events you'd like to have. In a very specific um, uh, context, uh, and, and, and you heard about uh, week 12, the assessment support week, we are going to run a college panel with students, not necessarily the same ones, but uh, you might be the same ones, um, with, with, with some of our uh, ex-students and our current students to talk about assessment to, to get to, so that before you break up for Christmas and revision, that you'll have some reflections from other students about how they dealt with that revision period so that you're, you're prepared for that revision and then the exams when they come back. So that's one thing that we're definitely going to do. Uh, in fact, Jen and Kerry are going to help me with that. So you've already you've already met them, uh, um, uh, help, helping uh, to set that up. So I think that's been a really rich discussion, uh, and and as you see, the panel have got a wealth of experience that hopefully you've started to to think about some of those things. There there are loads of questions here that we haven't had a chance to answer, although we've touched on some of them. What we'll do is we'll take these away 
um, and we'll construct a series of answers like frequently asked questions and we'll we'll circulate those to this to the whole group to the whole class and including those who couldn't be here and uh, including those who are hopefully contributing some of these questions at home um, uh, or, uh, or from distance so um, thanks very much uh, for coming along uh, I hope you found it useful I hope you feel part of the the les community and know who some of we are some of us are I hope when you you go around and you meet your tutors that that and, and the academic staff that you treat them as friends that that you engage with them in, in a really a really engaging way because it is a community of staff and students it, re it really is um, uh, important that, that you don't treat it like tugging the forelock and professor Pritchard and all that sort of thing um, uh, please please engage with the tutors that's the only way the dialogue can work and that we can all work together um, so it's a lovely sunny day um, uh, there's lots of things going on. There's the Guild Fair going on. There's the, um, uh, there's the International Students event. There's the Wellbeing Marquee. Or you could just go and get a coffee and, and, and chill out in the Green Heart. Um, some of you uh, I personally will see uh, on Thursday for the Evolution Lecture, um, uh, which I look forward to. Uh, and some of others of you in my tutorial group. So I, I will see you on Monday. Uh, but apart from that, thank you very much. And thank you very much to the panel. Thank you for Laura for taking the time to come. And thank you for the wonderful panel. And thank you to the guys for setting it all up. Um, uh, Hazel and, and others for setting this up for us. Have a really good day. See you all soon. It's going to be a long journey, but we've just started. Thanks for coming. <laughs>